I've been using the Odin 2 for a little while now, but I've actually never heard of this tool before. If you don't know by now, I love my screens a little oversaturated as I love really vibrant colors. This is Streets of Rage on Sega Genesis, and this is the default 1.0 saturation value. You can adjust this value manually by running the scripts as I've shown on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and the Retroid Pocket devices in general. However, with this app, we can boost the saturation to whatever we want, and you don't even have to restart the device to see the changes. So if you're looking to make your screen just a little bit more vibrant, let me show you how to get this set up. I think you're going to be pretty impressed with how easy this was. This is the Odin Tools app, and there's definitely a few extra features in here that we can take a closer look at. This is being updated constantly, and I've been really impressed with some of the features on here. First things first, let me show you how to get it set up. I'll leave this GitHub page linked in the description below so you can access that easily. First things first, you want to scroll down until you see the latest. Currently I'm making this video, it's 1.1. This is going to tell us some of the new features in this update, but what we're looking for is the APK file, and that's right here. Just go ahead and click download, and that'll start the download. Now that that's downloaded, press open, and it'll go ahead and install that. I've already installed this, so it's going to say, do you want to update this? But if you haven't installed this, it's just going to say cancel or install. So just go ahead and click install and open the app. Now that we've got this open, there's a few things we can take a look at. The top option here is to set different options for each app. So this is very helpful if you want to set different performance modes for different games. Let's just open this, take a closer look at that, add the app override, and scroll down until you find the one that you want to add. For Aether SX2, you might want to change it to Xbox mode. You can also change the L2 and R2 mode from digital to analog, or you can have it set to both. And you can also change the performance mode depending on what you're doing. Since PS2 is pretty demanding, you might want to choose high performance mode for that. And you can also go ahead and choose a different fan curve. I'm going to leave it on smart. Then I'm going to go ahead and save those settings for that app. This also works for native Android games like Wreckfest, or this also works with apps like YouTube or anything else. So as you can see, this top option is pretty handy. It definitely allows us to customize the device and its performance depending on what we're playing. If you're noticing you're using a lot of these overrides and your apps are crashing when you're trying to start them, you might want to turn on this second option. This effectively just gives the app half a second to start up before it changes the performance modes. There are some quick settings, such as the controller style. This effectively allows us to disable the Xbox or Nintendo style, which they've labeled as Odin. If you don't have any games that use the Nintendo layout or you've switched them all to the Xbox, you can go ahead and disable that. You can also disable the analog or digital trigger option or the both option in the second menu. I'm just going to leave both there. I do also recommend enabling this single press home button option. This allows us to get into the home page a lot quicker. By default, if you press the home button, this message is going to come up. If you go ahead and turn that on and you press the home button, it'll instantly take you back to your launcher. I think the best feature of this app is allowing us to change the display saturation values. I like 1.3, but you can set this to whatever you want. If we set this down to zero, you're going to see this instantly change. So you don't need to restart the device for this to take effect. If you want to set this back to its default value, just make sure you set that to 1 and click save. This is the default option of 1.0 and it still looks really good. The Odin definitely has a nice screen. Here's my recommended value of 1.3. This definitely adds a lot more contrast to it and I really think this is where this panel is kind of ideal. The nice thing about this is you can change it very easily. So if you don't like 1.3, you can always reduce it to 1.2 or whatever you want. If you wanted to max out the contrast, this is what 2.0 looks like. The colors are a little oversaturated and you're losing a lot of the detail, so I wouldn't recommend using 2.0. I find Streets of Rage is a really good game to show off the different contrast options as there's a lot of color at the very beginning. With the options set to 2.0, you can see quite a bit of detail washed out. Feel free to play around with the contrast slider to see what looks good with the games you play. One thing to note as well is it does take a couple seconds for the settings to reapply after a reboot. Let me show you exactly what that looks like. 
I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the device. Once it starts up, you're gonna notice the colors haven't been changed, but wait a few seconds and those settings should apply. This is the default color. Wait a couple seconds and there it goes. It only takes a couple seconds, but it's nice to see itself reapply after a reboot. Just for curiosity's sake, I also tried this on the older Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and it doesn't seem to work. As soon as you try to install the app, it just gives you an error message, and I think that's because this app is designed for a newer version of Android. You can still use these saturation scripts on these older devices, and that seems to work well. After I've tried this on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, I'll leave a pinned comment down below if that works or not. I think a lot of these settings are really nice to have, and it's cool to see that in that app, but it would be nice to also have this built into the OS. So what do you guys think of the Odin Tools app? I think this is a pretty cool custom app and it really adds a lot of flexibility to the device. Hopefully we see more cool options added to this app down the road and I really hope this thing continues to develop nicely on this handheld. As for me, I'm just happy to see that I don't have to make a custom script every single time that I want to change the saturation value. If you have any questions regarding the Odin Tools app, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and as always, thanks for watching.